and until we become people of principles, then we're gonna be tossed around by every whim that drives our emotions. Focus is a distraction to anything that you're not focused on. Distraction is focus, and focus is distraction. And I am telling you, the stuff that's blocking you in your life, it might be bigger than you, but that's not why it's blocking you. It's blocking you because you're focused on the fact that it's bigger than you. Don't allow the cultural hypnotic societal mechanism to put a identity on you by telling you all the stuff you're not. I am telling you that it is not God's design for his people to be broke, period. I'm not gonna back in the door with that, but man, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. I know it does, but see, I've studied it and I know what that means. It's a perfect cure. It's not a, it's not a kind of, sort of good cure. Here's, here's what's fascinating. God's not gonna be right about heaven and wrong about everything else. And this whole idea that followers of Christ are supposed to be broke is a satanic lie that's been propagated by religion. And so a misinterpretation will cause you to miss your blessing. What does that mean? Don't talk about what you're going to do, walk about what you're going to do. Right? Everybody, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Yeah, show me then talk about it. By the way, I can ride a bike two miles faster than he can run one mile. I go farther, faster, and use less energy. So what do we learn from that principle? The people who are making way more money than you are not making more money than you because they're working harder than you. In fact, they're making more money than you because they're not working harder than you. Now you say, Myron, why do you keep doing this? I keep doing this because the principle is this. I can always make up and leverage what I lack in ability. It is always easier to make great strides than it is to make great advances, small advances. It's always, everybody say always. It's always easier to make great strides than it is to make small advances. But because you've been programmed by the cultural hypnotic societal mechanism and you spent the majority of your young life in the government indoctrination camps, AKA um, child prisons, schools, whatever you want to call them, since you spent most of your life in that arena, what happened was you were programmed to make small advances over a long period of time and nobody ever taught you how to make great gains over a very short period of time. How many of y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Wave at me. And so what has to happen is you, if, you, if you're gonna make great strides, you have to learn to think differently. I said I can always make up and leverage what I lack in ability. But here's, here's why most people don't do that. Because they don't understand that leveraged work is better than laborious work, Yes. right? It's, it produces more, it uses less energy, it's more effective, it's more efficient, it's more, it's better in every conceivable way. The reason most people never get rich is because they spend their entire life running financially. But people who, rich, people who make a little bit more money, they get a bicycle. People who make a lot more money, they get a car. People who make more money than they have time to spend, they either have a plane or a jet. See, if you take that same principle, if it's easier to go farther, faster, and use less energy in transportation, it has to be true that it's easier to make more money working less if you have the right leverage. So what we have to do is we have to slow down from the running that we know is already not working long enough to find some leverage, pay for it if necessary, take the time to learn how to use it if necessary, so we can finally change our lives. And so you could literally give yourself a raise just by making a decision, not a choice, a decision. Choice, like choose means pick one. When you cut yourself off from any other possibility other than the fact, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what my life is gonna be about, and nothing's gonna stop me. When that becomes your mantra, when that becomes your decision, oh, you can't be, there's no, they, they can't stop you. Yeah, but you don't understand. I'm a woman and a man, can't, the men can't stop. I'm a black man in a white man's world. White man can't stop. I'm a white man in a black man's world. Black man can't stop. I mean, there is no excuse. The limitation exists in your head. And so what you do is you go around acting as if it exists around you when it only exists within you. And I am telling you, if you will get better at thinking and better at talking, you will make more money. You can raise the floor and eliminate the ceiling. And it'll change your life. If you're gonna quit, quit when it's going well. If you're gonna quit, quit when it's easy. If you're gonna give up, give up at the top of the mountain, not at the bottom of the mountain, not on the side of the mountain, not in the middle of the mountain. Give up when you get to the top of the mountain. If you're gonna quit, quit after you make it work in grand fashion. Quit after you build and sell a successful business. Don't quit on the journey. 
people will start working on something because they have this grand vision in their mind. And they think, when this happens, it's going to be great. And it doesn't happen as fast or as smoothly as they thought it should happen, and then they quit. Even though there are risks involved, I'm going to work when it looks like it might not work if when it does work, it's worth it. See, if, if the downside is limited and the upside is unlimited, that is a chance I'm always willing to take. And see, there are people who are not willing to take a chance on an unlimited upside because they're so afraid, afraid of the limited downside. So here's what's amazing. The people that have the most to lose are the least afraid to lose it. And the people that have the least to lose are the most afraid to lose it. It's just like that today. Yeah, man, that seems like a scam. Bro, I got some bad news for you. You grown and broke. You already been scammed. There are people who are more successful than you, who are less talented than you. There are people who are more successful than you that are not as smart as you. There are people that are more successful than you who are less skillful than you. The difference is the risk associated with preparing to build something scares people away. But see, unfortunately, because we were programmed in a Western society where previous historical business moguls didn't understand that winning is not a zero-sum game, they built manufacturing plants to make the stuff they were going to sell to the consumers, and then they built manufacturing plants for the workers to come work in their factories, and they called them schools. Oh, that's, that's a historic fact. That's why the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, all of they do, they contribute so much money to the educational system. Here's, there's nothing wrong with having a job, but it does create, it creates some issues inside of us. We become dependent on someone we don't know to make sure that we and our families are provided for. That's one. But the other problem is we get addicted to a paycheck. And we become so addicted to a paycheck that if it doesn't make us money instantly, we don't want to do it, right? And see, we want to sow today and reap today. That's not the law of the farm. The farm don't work like that. We, we got drive-through restaurants, drive-through banking, drive-through dry cleaners. We got m instant microwavable meals, instant this, instant that. Everything's instant, so we want instant drive-through microwavable success. It doesn't work like that. The, like, it's not that the, the potential danger is not real. Like, the ch like, when you're working on something, here's what we're learning from this. Work has risk associated with it. If you don't do the work because you're afraid of the risk, you will never get the wealth that only the work can bring. Time and chance is the intersection between preparation and opportunity. So who is the person that wins the race? The one that's most prepared when the race starts. Who is the person that wins the battle? The one that's most prepared when the battle starts. Who is the one that has favor and bread and riches? The one who's most prepared. And if you dig a hole while you're preparing yourself, here's, here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna take time. Preparing yourself is going to take time. And some people, because of the risk associated with the time that it takes to prepare, that because that time that I'm preparing, I'm not doing other things that I'd really rather do. So I'm not preparing for the rest of my life because I'm existing through this current chapter in my life. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you, be fruitful multiply. Let me go back there first. Be fruitful, what is fruitful? A fruit, according to Genesis, is a living organism whose seed is in itself. So the ability to regenerate and replicate and duplicate and multiply is inside of you. So when God told man to be fruitful, God is telling us that he put an aspect of his creativity, the seed of an aspect of his creativity inside of all of us. But what we have to do is we have to cultivate the seed of the aspect of creativity that God put inside of us. We have to cultivate that seed and let it produce. So that, that's the B part. Being fruitful means you make sure what I put inside of you shows up outside. That's what be fruitful means. Make room, like you prepare yourself and then you make room for the blessing regardless of the risk associated with making room. And so there's risk associated with the preparation. There's risk associated with the clearing there's, and making of room. There's risk associated with building something. But do it anyway. 
It's not going to be easy, it's just going to be worth it. It's not going to be cheap, it's just going to be worth it. Everybody's not going to go with you, but it's still going to be worth it. This is why I keep on working when stuff seems like it's not working for me. And so many people don't like the way it feels when the work is working on you, so you stop working on it. And so because you stop working on it, it can't work for you. But if you let it work on you long enough, you will become the person for whom it can work. But between the time you dig the hole and plant the seed and clear the space and move the stone and start building, between all of that time, there's a gestation period. Don't become impatient with a just, oh, I sowed the seed yesterday, where's my fruit? That's not how it works. I'm telling you, if you will trust the process, the if then go to statements, the conditional promises, and you do the conditions and let God take care of the promises, you're going to be blown away. You're going to be misunderstood. And you're not just going to be misunderstood by people who don't know you and don't like you. You're going to be misunderstood by people who love you, people who are family members, maybe a spouse, maybe a child, maybe a parent. Maybe your best friend's going to misunderstand you, but you're going to be misunderstood. Do not think for a half of a millisecond that Christ, who was perfect in every way, shape, and form, he doeth all things well. If he's all that and he's misunderstood, why are you tripping? Don't be surprised when people don't understand you. Be surprised when they do. Some of you are really, really close, but it doesn't feel like it. When the farmer plants the seed in the ground, he doesn't go out there every day and say, you gonna grow or not? He, the farmer does what the farmer does, and he trusts the soil and the sun and the water to do what only the sun, the soil, and the water can do. Why? Because I understand the law of the farm. What is the law of the farm? Every deed is a seed. Every word is a seed. Every thought is a seed. Every dollar is a seed that I'm sowing into the garden of my future. If I sow good seeds, it's impossible for me not to reap a good harvest. It's impossible for me not to reap a good harvest. Keep it real. And, and, and here's the thing. All of us know something that'll help somebody other than us. All of us know something. There's a group of, there, there was a group of people out there in the world waiting for Miss Homemaker Martha Stewart to write a book on how to decorate your house. And now she's a billionaire with a bee baby. See, we think it's some big breakthrough. Well, it is. Here's the breakthrough. Go serve the people. He will be greatest among you, let him be serving them all. Care more about them getting their result than you do about their getting their money, and I promise you, you'll start making sales. See, I say, believing, believing, believing. You will be living what you're believing, even though you be lying. What does that mean? Anything I tell myself about a future outcome, I made it up. You can say I'm going home, but what you really mean is I intend to go home. You're not guaranteed to get there. And see, what we have to understand is we have to understand that we have to become hyper-intentional about our work, about our thoughts. If we're going to become hyper-intentional about our thoughts, we automatically have to be hyper-intentional about our words. Because the reality is, you can speak without thinking, but you can't think without using words. And so God said, be fruitful and multiply. Why? Because multiplication is the natural output of the input of fruitfulness. So when God said, be fruitful and multiply, multiplication is the natural output of the input of fruitfulness. Like a fruit, a seed that you plant in the ground does not have the ability to only produce one fruit. Nothing in nature grows by addition. In nature, everything grows by multiplication, which means when God said be fruitful and multiply, the word multiply means to increase. But it's not just an incremental increase, it's an exponential increase. It's a geometric increase. See, there are people in the world who want to act like human beings are destroying the planet. But human beings aren't here for the planet, the planet's here for the human beings. God said clearly pollute not the land in which ye dwell. But the environment isn't God. The earth is not my mother. It is here to serve me. I am not here to serve it. When he said be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, the word replenish means to fill up. Don't make the mistake of thinking that when a beaver uses its limited creativity to build a dam and a creek in the forest, that that's organic. When an ant uses its limited creativity to build an anthill in the ground, that's organic. 
When an eagle uses its limited creativity to build a nest in a tree, that's organic. But when a human being uses its unlimited creativity to build a city, that's somehow inorganic. A city is as organic as an anthill, a beaver dam, or an eagle's nest. So when God said be fruitful and multiply, what he's telling us to do, he's telling us to increase and fill up the earth. Replenish means to fill up the earth with the multiplication of the things that we create. That's our job. What is God saying? God is saying that a human being's life is supposed to be progressively productive. What does that tell us? We shouldn't be living Groundhog Day. Today should be better than yesterday. This week should be better than last week. This month should be better than last month. This year should be better than last year. And I'm not just talking about better financially, but I'm including better financially. This whole idea that as you get older, you have to get sicker and weaker and broker is hideous. But if you believe that, then that's exactly how you're gonna set up your life. I know people my age who talk like they're 100. Guess what? They also walk like they're 100. They move like they're 100. Right? They act like they're on death's doorstep. I know people younger than me act like they're on death's, door, death, death's doorstep. I'm only 62. So stop thinking from the past. The past is nothing more than your launch pad for your future. Treat it like that. We have to make sure we don't allow our past to imprison our future in a life of lack and limitation. Well, thinking from the past instead of the future, that's one. Thinking that you're smaller than your challenges. What does that mean? You will never face anything that's bigger than you if you are operating based on kingdom principles. Nothing's bigger than you. You'll face challenges. Every step I take is a step in the direction of victory. But Myron, how can you say that? Because we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That doesn't mean I'm going to win. I already am already winning. I'm already more than winning. I expect things to work out in my favor. Why? Because I'm me. And I understand who me is in him. So, stop thinking that you're smaller than your challenges. You're not smaller than your financial challenges. You're not smaller than your health challenges. I get it. I get it. You can't fix every problem that you have. Don't think, like, don't think negative. Like, if you're, going, if you're going to put your effort into something and you're going to work on something, you cannot afford the luxury of a negative thought. I'm going to write a book. I can't afford to think that it won't sell. I'm going to build a business. I can't afford to think that I'm not going to get any clients. Some people won't get married because they're too afraid they're going to end up in divorce. It's, a, it's, a, that's why. Boredom does not exist for me in that arena. I can iterate a thousand times, 10,000 times, a hundred thousand times and not get bored because I'm not looking at the iterations. Most people only know how to come to conclusions that are disempowering. But here's what I learned about excuses from Jesus. If I don't make them, I don't have to take them because everything in life reproduces after its own kind. We don't get what we want, we get what we are. But I got news for you, here's what the scripture says, in all labor there is profit, what does that mean? All work works. There's no such thing as work that don't work. All work works. See, work is a two-sided coin, how many sides? How many sides? How many sides? Two, work is a two-sided coin. Flip it, heads, it's working for you. Flip it, tails, it's working on you. And what we have to do is we have to be yielded enough to let the work we're working on work on us until we become the person for whom it can work. And because we're so, we're so feedback dependent, we're so addicted to a paycheck, we're so addicted to instant results and microwave success, when we don't get an immediate payoff for the input that we put in, we conclude that we're going in the wrong direction. Transformation hurts before it helps. Transformation is painful before the payoff.